Hi, I'm Art Kessler, President of the Dystonia Medical Research Foundation, and I'm here with Dr. Mark Hallett from the National Institute of Health. Um, Dr. Hallett, you've been such a, a great um, supporter of the DMRF over the years, and you've been influential, so influential in, in the field of dystonia. Uh, we are pleased to welcome you back to our MSEC. I think this is what you're your third round, third round third, at our third at our tour. Third tour. Third tour. We, we never let the good ones go. <laughs> um, so we're, we're pleased to have you back at our MSET. And um, I wanted to ask you um, what do you see as the most promising things uh, going on in the field of dystonia research right now, especially with uh, guarded therapies? Right. Well, I think that in regard to therapies, of course, there's been the botulinum toxin stuff. And then there's the deep brain simulation. Deep brain simulation is sort of like magic these, these days. Um, but I think that uh, the eventual endpoint in terms of therapy is going to, going to be a basic cure of the disorder as opposed to just symptomatic relief. Both botulinum toxin and deep brain simulation are just symptomatic. Now they're good, <laughs> of course. But we really want to cure the disease at its base. And I think in that regard, our, uh, the more we understand about the cell biology, molecular biology, genetics, uh, we can learn enough to be able to try to change the course of the disease and cure it at its origin. And do you feel like we're getting closer to that? We are getting closer. We are probably not getting closer as fast as people would want. Uh, but that's the way science goes, you know. It uh, goes step by step and I think every year we seem to be getting closer. Uh, uh, clearly more and more genes are being identified. What those genes do is being identified. And uh, the more we know, the more likely we are to be able to do something that will intervene appropriately. Um, recently, you gave an interview that we published in the Dysonia Dialogue, and you talked about the importance of the Dysonia Medical Research Foundation to funding of new research labs. Can you talk about that in terms of how important that is for to bring new researchers into the field, especially in regards to how difficult today it is to, to get funding? I think that that really is the most important point. Uh, uh, in order to get a big grant, uh, such as from the National Institutes of Health, uh, you need to have preliminary data. Uh, and it's very hard to get preliminary data if you don't have at least a little bit of money. And I think uh, the, there's a very important role for groups like the DMRF to be able to identify <coughs> good, uh, good ideas, to be able to give some seed money to get things started, and to allow people to get some preliminary data. If they can get good preliminary data, then they can convert the seed money from the DMRF into a larger fund of money that will keep things moving along. Now, of course, not all ideas succeed, um, and, but it is still worthwhile to get a number of these things going that seem to be worthwhile, and some of them will bloom. Okay, great. Um, can you tell us anything about what's going on in your lab now? Is there anything exciting that people would like to hear about? Sure. Um, uh, one of the major things that we do in our group is to uh, try to understand uh, the different fundamental features of patients that have dystonia. Why is there too much movement? Uh, what is the circuitry involved in that? Um, one of the things that has interested us uh, lately is trying to figure out the uh, pathophysiology of something called task specificity. One of the uh, very interesting things about dystonia is that in doing particular tasks there can be a problem but not in other ones. This is very clear, for example, that some people have trouble walking forward but not backward. Mm -hmm or uh, uh, people have trouble writing but not typing. And so there has to be something in the circuitry that will make some sense about those particular phenomena. And I think we've now begun to understand that. So that's one of the things that I'm, that I'm particularly excited about because we've been working on it for a very long time. Um, 
One of the other things that, uh, that we're doing, which uh, I, I think is quite valuable as, as well, is to learn a little bit more about the neurotransmitters uh, in, in the brains of people that have dystonia. Uh, as, as you know, there hasn't been a lot of pathology identified in terms of cell loss, but something's wrong, and the question is, uh, where is it wrong? Is it wrong at the level of the neurotransmitters? So uh, we've worked with dopamine, we've worked with GABA, and now we're working in the cholinergic system, trying to uh, see what could be abnormal in that, uh, in, in that area. It's been clear for a long time that the cholinergic system is important. Anticholinergic drugs are helpful in many people, for example. Uh, so there's something going on in the cholinergic system, and that's one of the things we're working on right now. And will this lead to new drugs on the horizon? I would hope so. I mean, this goes back to what we were talking about in the, at the outset. Uh, the more we understand about the fundamental biology, and, and the neurotransmitters are part of that fundamental neurobiology, uh, that will give us ideas about where we can go for fundamental cures of the disorder. Great. Thank you so much. We're so happy to welcome you back to the MSEC. And uh, really happy that you're here this weekend. It, my pleasure.